we wait for people to join, I want to just say welcome again. Happy International Youth Day on behalf of USAID or the United States Agency for International Development, YP2LE and Generation Unlimited. We welcome you to the Global Lead Watch Our Impact Dialogue event. So we'll go ahead and get started um, this morning, this evening, wherever you're joining us from today. Uh, my name is Cole Simcoe. I'm here today with an amazing team of event hosts from USAID, Youth Power 2 Learning and Evaluation and Generation Unlimited. Um, we are super excited to have you all here today. Um, and we're super excited to be celebrating International Youth Day. Um, as you may have, as you may know, um, we've had dozens of submissions to the Global Lead Watcher Impact Contest. You can go and find all of the videos submitted um, by going online to youthlead.org and watch all of the videos. <clears throat> um, before we begin today, uh, or we'll begin today by watching three of the winners' videos and celebrating their stories of impact, Jen Yu will then provide some opening remarks on the importance of today. Following this, we will launch into a lively discussion with our winners and the USAID administrator, Samantha Power. We'd like to thank and also welcome our two American Sign Language interpreters who are supporting us today. Uh, again, I'd like to welcome you all to the Global Lead Watch Our Impact Dialogue event. We're so excited for everyone to join. Um, so let's begin by watching three of the videos from the Watch Our Impact winners. Please keep an eye out in the chat for them as they will introduce themselves and share some facts and information about their initiatives um, and looking to connect with you. So one second and we will move over to the videos and let's begin. COVID-19 has made a huge impact on our daily life, our economy, politics, environment, and lifestyle. It even led to a dramatic loss of human life worldwide. One of the massive environmental effects the pandemic has caused us is the increasing use of disposable face masks that is contributing to our waste problems. There are billions of people around the world who are irresponsibly using face masks. In Jakarta, Indonesia alone, about 1,213 kilograms of disposable face masks were thrown within 10 months, and an estimate of 102 million are being thrown each week in the UK. Based on Ocean Asia, 1.5 billion face masks will enter the ocean in the coming years, which is a great threat to our marine ecosystem. To combat this rising environmental concern, the Young Sea team came up with a social media COVID-19 awareness platform where we aim to educate everyone about the ways we can help our environment centering on responsible face mask usage. We aim to spread information about how to reduce, reuse, recycle, and promote how people around the world are integrating environmental friendly and biodegradable face mask alternatives. To further promote our advocacy, we started Youth in Action, a webinar where face mask talks and environmental topics are discussed. We have already started this platform and even kicked started our very first webinar. Through partnering with organization and inviting seasoned speakers in the near future, we aim to take this platform to greater heights. We always believe in the quote, If you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. This is also a message we want to convey to everyone. Together, let us build a better home and be the change we want to see in the world.
Being a Global South female leader of a youth lead organization comes with a lot of challenges. Starting with questions like, aren't you ambitious for a Global South organization? How can you be a leader? You are a girl. This question and similar one not only make me stronger, but it allowed my team to stay focused and drive action. My name is Ineza Umwaza Grace. I am an eco-feminist, impact-driven actor in the climate change sector. I'm committed to do what I can, when I can, while I can, in order to achieve a climate justice world. Being a girl born and raised in Gwanda, a country framed as either developing country or least developed country, for me, climate action means more than a global promises on a piece of paper. I don't even care if all countries signed. My journey started in 2017 when I was selected to be part of the 25 young emerging leaders across Africa and East Diaspora. And then I had the opportunity to participate in the National United uh, Summit on Desertification. This opportunity not only made me uh, aware of the gap in terms of young youth activity, but it also allowed me to have a sense of what I can do in my country and in my community. Acknowledging that I was not the only one, especially in my country, I started by creating what is known today as the Green Fighter with the aim to bring young people together in order to have an ambitious and active role in contributing to the creation of a better and protected environment, which we are still doing right now. To date, we have more, conducted more than 10 activities in the community, reaching more than 3,500 young people. In 2020, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, Along with my colleague, we started what is known today as the Loss and Damage Youth Coalition, which is a global partnership among young people in order to drive action to address climate change impact by addressing loss and damage. To date, the coalition has more than 250 members across more than 45 countries across the globe. Our mission is to drive action uh, on, loss, on addressing loss and damage by pressuring global leaders in form of open letters and also giving the opportunity of young people to share their perspective on how to deal with climate change impacts in their community. We sent two open letters, one addressing the United States of America and another one addressing the United Kingdom to share our hope, concern in the climate action sphere. My message is that mindset is a crucial asset in driving vision into reality. Climate action is a sphere where we need to increase mutual respect and common value for our common planet. Facts are visible, hopes are over the corner, especially if we are allowed to share the untold story and design ourselves to work together on a higher speed by avoiding the business as usual. I am from the generation which does not want to only blame the past mistake in achieving climate equity. We rather want to co-design and co create with leaders a sustainable future for our common planet by honoring the statement, leave no one behind. Now it is time to act. Quit fake promises and long-term talks. طول تحكي معاها يقول لك القروم ماتوا، ولد عندنا مونتاليتي كامله نتاع هكا غياب تاع امل نتاع ما خيرش من انك تبدا بالعقليات نتاع الصغار، لانه التغيير ديما يكون من الاجيال الجديده ما يكونش من الاجيال الكبيره. ليتك الياس اللي عند الشباب موجود زاد عند الصغار، غير ديما هي منطقه حدوديه. يعني اوتوماتيكمون باش تكون معرضه للتطرف، الاسباب اللي تخلي الناس تتطرف ما زالت موجوده في المنطقه. اللي هي برشا حق تنجم تكون في البنيه التحتيه. في تنمية أنا عندي تلميذ سألت كي تكبر شنو تحب تخدم يعني؟ قال لي نحب نخدم تزيري، قلت له تزيري هذه راهي جنسية ماهيش خدمة، قال لي لا تزيري معناها أنا نشد في البهيم في الجبل، معناها هو يقصد أنه بالكونترا كوا، أنا المدرسة اللي نخدم فيها ديجا فيها أعلى نسبة في غير ديما نتاع انقطاع مبكر عن الدراسة. مش كيما تلميذ في المدينة يعني يعمل باش يعمل درج ماكسيموم على ساقو باش يوصل للمدرسة، مش كيما تلميذ في الريف يعمل بالساعة بمشي، كي تصب مطر يفيض الواد ما عادش ينجم يجي خاطر الواد يسكر ثنية. شباب كله طاقات عنده برشا مواهب مسرح يكتب يغني يراب كل شيء مي ما عندوش سباس يمشي له باش يمارس الحاجه اللي حبها هو فهمت شبابنا توا يحاولوا يحركوها مي ما ماهوش قادرين بالكدا خاطر البنيه التحتيه كوا ماهيش مسمحه لنا ان نجموا نعملوا حاجات باهيين عامل لهم في المدرسه مكتبه الصغير اللي حبي يطالع يجي يقرا يهز من عندي انا قصه ولا حكايه يقراها ولا قصه ويراجعها لي 
الفضاء الخارجي نتاع المكتب العموميه قبل التدخل نتاع معان كان ما في حد شيء بعد التدخل نتاع معان تو ولا فيها والنجم نبقى والنجم نعملوا اجتماعاتنا مديره المكتب العموميه حكيت معاه قلت له نحب نحل كلوب نتاع مطالعه باش نجموا شباب ولا الاطفال نتاع المنطقه كلها يطالعوا انا بطريقه جديده نشجعوا بعضنا نقراوا اكثر خاطر نحس ان المطالعه من اكثر حاجات تحل مخ العبد وتخليها هكا يكون انسان فايق ليست يعني هو من العبيد من القاده كوا في غير ديما ديما هو اللي يهبط في الفرص والابورتينيتيز وكل شيء يعمل فورماسيونيات يعمل يحاول يشارك ديما فهمت يمشي حتى يعمل حاجه في في تونس يشارك في حكايه غادي يعمل فرع هنا كنت بنيفيسيار يعني من درجه اولى كلك سوا في اليوث مانتر كنت بنيفول معاهم با دو فوا على خاطر الخدمه نتاعهم شفت الامباكت نتاعها كلوب نتاع نتاع المطالع على هنا في المكتبه كيف كيف معناتها رجع لي بالفايده ونعمل فورماسيونيات مع العبيد معينين فورماسيون ديجا نحنا يعني عاملين فيها مانتورينج وكل شيء يجي سبع شهور ولا ثمان شهور جو بونس نخدموا قاعدين ناثروا على برشا عباد ونعمل في حاجات محلاهم يعني العباد قاعدين يقولوا لنا كي كي كامله قاعدين نعمل حكايه في المجتمع قاعدين نعمل في حاجات قاعدين نفيد في عباد قاعدين نشوف في عباد قاعدين قاعدين نقول لهم فيهم كوا بالطبيعه ديما الامباكت موجود ديما تحس هكا تغيير في العباد ليه هذه حاجه قم عليها ما عندنا يعني التنميه الايجابيه للشباب ما فما حد شيء يجيك مسقط كل شيء انت تقترحه وانت تشارك فيه وانت تخدمه يعني Wow, it is so inspiring to see the impact these young leaders have made in their communities. We'll get back to our watch our impact winners and your questions shortly. First, I want to really wish everyone a happy International Youth Day. I am Manuela Radesberg, Program Specialist at the Public-Private Youth Partnership Generation Unlimited, a partnership that is highly committed to supporting young change makers. I am here today standing in for my wonderful colleague Ilvard Elman, who unfortunately was unable to join us. Um, but I really hope that she will be able to join us later today. And she sends her congratulations and best wishes to all the winners of the Global Lead Watch Our Impact Contest. Today, we celebrate the impact youth have on the world. The Global Lead Watch Our Impact Dialogue is a safe space for youth to bring their stories to life. Storytelling is one of the oldest methods of communication in history. It relates to our experiences and ideas. It bonds us, it humanizes us. Young leaders driving change play a vital role in transforming education, health, civic and economic systems. And it starts with telling your story. Who is more qualified to share young people's challenges, needs, hopes and dreams than young people themselves? Last year has been an unprecedented time The COVID-19 pandemic had a tremendous effect on us, our loved ones, our communities, and our livelihoods. And we are not out of the woods yet. We are all trying to navigate this new post-pandemic world. Specifically, young people have proven time and time again how resilient they are. So many young people rose to the occasion. For example, as part of the Generation Unlimited Youth Challenge, Young innovators develop their own game-changing ideas and solutions for challenges they face and create a vast impact for their communities. Despite the difficulties of the COVID-19 pandemic, young people persisted and it is truly amazing to witness in full force the resilience, ingenuity and grit of young people today. One of the winning teams of the second youth challenge is the Green Project in Kenya. The team was concerned with the rise of unemployment rates in Kenya, especially due to the pandemic. And therefore, the team's vision is to engage unemployed youth in slum areas in, in the provision of affordable and reliable renewable energy from organic waste while cutting dependency on expensive fossil fuels, which enable communities to take part in the global fight against climate change. What a great example of young social and environmental entrepreneurs. Young people were also eager for opportunities and connection. YouthLead.org, the online platform for young change makers, saw a significant uptick in youth using their platform to access tools and resources and to connect with like-minded young leaders. 
your fleet surpassed 12,000 members in the fall of 2020, and their ambassador program received a record-breaking 3,000 applications for only 21 available slots. Let's take a moment to virtually applaud you and all their efforts. The International Youth Day gives us an opportunity to spotlight young people's voices, actions, and initiatives. To prepare for today, in June, Global Lead put out a call through the Watch Our Impact Digital Storytelling Contest. We asked youth to show us videos or slideshows how they are making a lasting impact in their communities. And they answered the, that call. Your inspiring submissions came from all around the globe in Arabic, English, French, and Spanish. We witnessed your service, activism, advocacy, and entrepreneurship. You took us inside places like the fight for human rights in Sri Lanka and the transformation of education in Armenia. Diverse perspectives, multiple languages, but one resounding collective display of action. We will meet the winners of the Watch Our Impact contest in a few minutes and through a conversation with, with USAID administrator Samantha Power, we will get a better glimpse of the young people behind the stories of Watch Our Impact. So how can you make the most of our time together today? I want to invite you to really think of yourselves as active co-creators, not just audience members. The Watch Our Impact Dialogue was designed as an interactive session for knowledge sharing, idea generation, and relationship building. Use the live chat feature to connect and interact with one another throughout the event, share ideas, and continue discussions. During the breakout sessions, you will be able to post questions to our guest speakers, and we will try to get to as many questions as we can. Now, it is my extreme honor to open up the virtual main stage with our esteemed guest, USAID Administrator, Samantha Power. Let me give you a brief introduction of Samantha Power. As an immigrant from Ireland, Samantha Power began her career as a war correspondent in Bosnia and went on to report from places including Kosovo, Rwanda, Sudan, and Zimbabwe. She's an author and editor of multiple books and the recipient of the 2003 Pulitzer Prize for Nonfiction. From 2013 to 2017, Power served in the Obama Biden administration as the 28th US permanent representative to the United Nations. Prior to joining the Biden Harris administration, Power was a professor, professor of global leadership and public policy and a professor of human rights at Harvard University. Samantha Power was sworn into the office of the 19th Administrator of USAID in May of this year. Samantha Power, welcome. The stage is yours. Good morning, everyone. So often, the development community thinks of young people as simply the beneficiaries of our programming. International Youth Day is about rejecting that notion and demonstrating that young people are in fact some of our strongest partners in securing peace and progress on the ground. In everything from advocating on behalf of the marginalized and people with disabilities to embracing and employing clean energy and sustainable farming techniques to driving peaceful movements for democracy on nearly every continent, young people are not waiting for change, young people are driving change. And not only that, they are documenting it as they go. They're not just making a difference, they're telling stories of impact and progress. They are communi communicating urgency. They are generating awareness with compelling images and persuasive messages. They are better at this than my generation and other generations that have come before them. They are inspiring others to follow their example. I'm really grateful and proud to be with you here today uh, to celebrate them for it by recognizing the Global Lead Program's digital storytelling contest winners. We just got a glimpse from our contest winners' video submissions. We heard from S. Abida, who is fighting the dramatic spike we have seen in PPE waste following the COVID pandemic. 
by him launching a social media campaign that has encouraged people to embrace reusable and biodegradable face masks. We heard from Chaima Mahan Project uh, that partners with local municipalities uh, in Tunisia to spread important COVID public health updates to remote areas where access to news and information was scarce. Thank you for that, Chaima. And we heard from Iniza, who leads the Green Fighter, an environmental NGO in Rwanda that engages youth to conduct neighborhood cleanups, start environmental clubs in schools, and conduct letter writing campaigns urging governments to take action on the environment. Despite the enormity of the challenges that lie ahead, whether it is with our pandemic response, with the growing climate crisis, with the challenge of advancing democracy or generating economic opportunity, USAID sees in our youth partners a willingness and capacity, not just to make an impact, but to inspire uh, others to join the cause. Throughout history, Young people like S. Abida, Chaima, and Iniza have always been behind movements for progress and social change, whether here in the United States or uh, around the world. What is different today is the ease and accessibility you have to both document and evangelize your work through tools as familiar and commonplace as smartphones and social media networks. We received dozens of videos to the Watch Our Impact contest. Young people who are preventing gender-based violence, using data-based reporting to hold leaders to account, and starting small businesses to increase economic prosperity. All of these uh, efforts were able to translate their work in the real world into powerful videos documenting that work. That ability to tell stories and to share one story is so important because your power lies in activating one another, in your ability to connect with other young people and unite around issues and injustices that matter to you and to your generation. We are pleased at USAID, not only to support young people, but to empower them as leaders and to invest in them as storytellers. Together, you're forming the foundation of a new generation of global leader. You are tangibly sharing your vision for a brighter future with the rest of the world. I look forward to seeing where you'll go, where you'll take us, and I look forward to hearing all the stories in the future that you are going to tell. Now I have the pleasure of inviting our digital storytelling contest winners back to the virtual stage. Welcome, each of you, and hearty uh, congratulations. So I have the pleasure now of, of asking our winners uh, a few questions um, and opening up the dialogue here, which I've been looking forward to. So let us start with uh, S. Abida from Indonesia. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how young people are viewed in your community, whether you feel sufficiently taken seriously, sufficiently empowered, uh, and, and kind of how you've claimed power for yourself uh, and taken agency, uh, again, in your, in your own community. Greetings, uh, um, greetings, administrator power. Uh, based on uh, research by Indonesia Youth and Sport Ministry in 2014, are young people still feel excluded from development programs? There is an impression that young people are still being treated as object of development rather than empowering them as active actors. Their aspirations should be identified and made through survey or focus group discussion that can become the basis of your friendly policies. The activities is still lacking based on my experience in Indonesia and so there are a lot that need to be done. Thank you so much. What about you, uh, Chaima? I know Mahan partners with uh, local municipalities uh, in Tunisia 
uh, you know, to spread the COVID-19 um, messages. I, it seems like incredibly important work, um, incredibly timely work. Can you tell us a little more about how this idea came to you, how the Mahan program took hold and, and other examples uh, from Tunisia from what you have seen about young people uh, leading the change? So um, the idea is uh, after the implementation of the Mahan project, youth and different marginalized communities across all Tunisia have had the sense of empowerment and inclusion uh, when it comes to civil society and when it comes to starting their own initiatives in a way that they became more committed to contributing to their own communities. Uh, the story that we have told throughout the video talks about the um, using the refurbished public library uh, and initiating or launching a reading club that provides access to learning opportunities for dropout um, for school dropouts and uh, students who don't really or youth in general who don't really have access to these kind of learning opportunities and that helped in a way in reducing their involvement in violent activities or in their attempts to look for illegal ways to emigrate or to get out of the country um, they now have more like the the youth in Tunisia or the youth in the communities where Man is working are more engaged with their local uh, local institutions and local stakeholders in order to better respond to the needs of their respective communities and to address the frustrations or the challenges and uh, respond with a way that addresses that goes with the local dynamics. Let's say. Interesting. Um, and uh, Eniza, what about you? Do you have uh, advice for young change makers uh, to learn how to better engage with, with governments and donors who, who can help support uh, the kind of work that you're doing? How, how did you manage that? And, and what would you tell young people just starting out uh, and pursuing their change? Thank you so much for, for the question. And to answer it, I will, I will start by um, telling what I, what I would say to my younger self if I can meet them. So the very first thing I can say is first, don't give up because regardless of how the challenge will be, it's our future. And we have a right to we have a right to be present on the decision making table. And if we are not being invited, for example, if we are being excluded or we're not viewed as uh, actors or implementers, we can we can really create our own table. Then invite those the government or the people in in, in power to come over and listen to us. Because once you do that, once you create your own table, you create a space where young people feel empowered to speak up, empowered to, um, to dare to believe what the future should look like. And once we have the young people all have a common understanding of what the future should the future will look like, all, all the all the policymakers, all the government leaders, they all have been youth and they have uh, they have uh, their uncle and aunts, which means um, once once we all have a common sense, we can easily influence them. We don't we don't need to uh, we don't need to uh, fight against the system. We just create a system where we are we all feel supported by each other and where we, we empower it, we empower ourselves to understand and to act. This is basically what uh, um, what we have been doing in my in the organization because we started in civil society. It was really hard to uh, to come up with grants or like to really put for the proposal. But after after three years, that's that is when we started to go back and really analyze what is our value as a team, a team of the young generation, a team that is going to be there because we operate in the climate change sector. So we are youth who are going to be dealing with this change for the future. So it, will, it makes sense for us to equip ourselves to understand what is our value and then let us all pre present our value to the decision making table. And it really worked. The best thing is that don't give up, regardless of the challenge. That's great. I, I promise you, no matter how old you get, that remains the most important uh, message if you're if you're trying to make change or, or combat injustice, uh, never giving up. It, it never changes. So if you've developed that resilience and that skill at a young age, it's going to take you take you far. Um, 
I, I wonder, I didn't want us to, to close the conversation without talking specifically about the power of storytelling. I'm, I'm a former journalist and an author myself and, and have thought a lot about, about storytelling, but um, I, I look at, at the kinds of things that you have done using digital uh, tools and I'm kind of in awe of it. And it does seem like an incredibly important uh, tool in the toolbox. I, I wonder if any of you would like to just um, weigh in and, and, and just talk about how you've seen uh, this, this ability to communicate or this effort to communicate paying dividends in terms of getting people's attention and allowing them to identify in, in different ways than if you hadn't um, brought the, the storytelling and the digital tools to bear. Just any examples of the power of storytelling. Um, I can I can I can give an example of what I can think right now. Great. Uh, so last year, um, I learned about the power of uh, sharing your voice. And uh, last year in 2020, that was the very first time I shared my voice in form of a blog, and it was really important for me because I get to see what kind of a message you can put forward in informing uh, decision makers in terms of expressing the lived experience of the front-end community. And then after, um, after, after a few months, we kind of um, really, really think along with other partners on how to make the information accessible, not only to policy making of decision makers, but also to the younger generation. So the, the best idea that came out from there was to make an animation because regardless of how, how old you are, no one can hate a cartoon. So we conducted all the blog, we created a script to make a cartoon. And after making the cartoon, it was really easier for people to get the right message and the right call for action in just two minutes. And that, that kind of show, that can show to me like storytelling is, um, is a proper tool in advocacy because it can create hope, but it can also create a form of uh, alliance or coalition to get a sense of connectivity in driving concrete action for the community. That's what I can share. That's great. What? I love I love the idea of animation as the maximally accessible uh, kind of means because who who wouldn't who wouldn't welcome a cartoon, right? All ages um, can can check in with that. Uh, others. Um, I would like to also brush on this, the importance of storytelling when it comes to the specific man project in Tunisia, because our youth leaders have been uh, conducting trainings for storytellings uh, for youth participants across the communities. And we, what we have noticed is after the training, a lot of people uh, managed to foster or to create a safe and brief space for um, youth to participate, to voice in their ideas, to share their stories, whether it's like a challenging story or a successful story uh, a lot of people get get outside of the the storytelling sessions with a sense of belonging and being more engaged and having a support system within people who understand them who go through the same things that they are going through who face the same challenges and frustrations and it creates a sense of empathy towards people in a sense of understanding the, the, the difference in our backgrounds and the difference of um, the personalities and the difference of way of seeing things and it contributes to building their resilience to the those differences and how to handle them on daily basis. And I think that also was uh, developed in a way in the video that the youth leaders have uh, worked on and that with the one that we have submitted and how they told the story of the impact of a simple uh, reading club that was launched in a public library and have contributed to provide the safe space for people to come and engage with uh, with youth, engage with local partners, and also engage with different stakeholders in the community, uh, have their own events, organize their uh, reading sessions or their theater sessions. And it all feeds into the creation of um, a support system where everyone feels valued, feels like their ideas are heard and their voices are um, up and on the air for people to take in lessons and help them like push forward and move into implementing or being engaging being more engaging with their civil society activists or with their peers in general Esabida? 
uh, thank you. Uh, I think that storytelling is very important uh, in this digital age uh, that we can uh, share our perspective and our experience to other people uh, with uh, various uh, media, for, uh, for example, cartoon, poster, and videographic, infographic. And it's really uh, great because uh, it's what people can understand easily. And any, any examples from your work that you want to share about how you've used it um, with the PPE waste, how you've communicated? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, so we, uh, we conduct a um, webinar and virtual event because this, in, this is in time of pandemic. Uh, we receive significant amount of uh, enthusiasm around the world with uh, more than 500 uh, registrants for 64 uh, countries, and we already empower 147 uh, people around the world. Uh, by uh, this media, digital media, uh, we can empower each other uh, no matter how far uh, we uh, come from. We can uh, collaborate and discuss about certain things that uh, matter to us as a youth. Got it. All right, well, thank you, everybody. Um, I know we only scratched the surface um, in, this, in this discussion, but uh, it's very inspiring to hear that you've just seen issues in your communities and just decided, okay, we're here. We're gonna try to fix the, these, these issues that we see. We're not gonna wait around for, for uh, the older generations uh, to manage. If, if we want to see the change, we have to make the change. And then, the ease with which your generation uh, can think creatively about how to use the digital tools is just, again, something that I think is a real asset for you. Um, it's very inspiring to those of us who are a little uh, clunkier uh, with, our, with our use of technology. Um, so I, I think that, uh, again, it's very, been very inspiring. Um, do you think there, there are any lessons you want to share just before we wrap up about what would inspire youth who aren't involved to take that step that you all took, you know, kind of quite naturally yourselves? Are there, are there when you see friends of yours or classmates who are, you know, a little bit shy about putting themselves forward, what, what advice would you, would you give to them? Uh, so I I'm truly agree that uh, youth has a very huge potential that must be directed into positive activities such as sport, volunteerism, or art. Uh, so we need a platform to do that uh, these positive activities. For example, uh, this event which our impact uh, contest or yetlit.org is a great platform for us young people around the world to meet, collaborate, and learn from each other. Thank you. Others who, you know, Eniza or Chaimo, when you see your, your peers kind of a little bit skeptical that they can make a difference, what, what, what kind of advice or what, what would you say to them? Eniza? Um, yeah, um, so what I can say to them is uh, don't be scared to show your full colors because most of the, most of the, uh, most of the time, uh, because I know the feeling, you may want to start something, but we have those background voices in your mind telling you that you don't have the experience, you don't have the right connection. But once you once you move forward and you become uh, fearless, if I can say, they, you have a clear vision of what you really want. And once you are committed and determined, um, everything is perfectly aligned to make you be uh, what you want and be and do what you really want to see happening in your community. Because once the one thing that youth need to understand is that um, we are the one responsible for our future and there's no one who's going to take the action if we are not really committed and focused to determine ourselves in doing it day in and day out. That's what I would say. We say, uh... Uh, yeah, I don't know if you've heard this expression, but there's nobody here but us chickens. <laughs> it's just us, uh, right? Um, what about you, uh, Chaima? When you when you see friends of yours who are a little bit skeptical, or who just want to focus on maybe on themselves or their own families, and and 
are a little nervous about getting involved in the community, what, what are the kinds of ways that you try to engage them? I think the best way to try to engage youth who are a little bit, let's say, disengaged from contributing or participating into, um, like, let's say, civil society activities or being integrated within the civil society sphere is showing them an example of someone who made it in trying to reignite kind of the, that spark of hope that it's still feasible even within the deteriorating system or with the outbreak of COVID, because like once they see a concrete example of someone uh, pushing through and implementing their idea or contributing in a way or another, that in itself brings hope back and helps people get into the contribution mode. And it helps also shift their perspective and maybe their mindset in itself to give them like that push that they need or that kind of empowerment that they need so that they can um, continue doing what they are doing or at least start trying to do something within their communities. What we have, um, when, when we were creating the video, we decided to call it impossible is not Tunisian because that's the motto that, that we have been using throughout the years of the Man project when it comes to the when, with our youth leaders and that really have proven to give people a kind of push or a kind of um, let's say a pat on the shoulder that yes it's feasible like some people have already done that and some people have been through that yes it's difficult but you have the right support system and you have people who would empower you and help you in order to achieve what you want to achieve and to create the change that you want to create within your small community let's say and then um broadcast it to the whole world and I think using the storytelling art and using the social media platforms that are available for our youth right now and providing concrete examples and good case practices for what happened and what can be happening right now is a great push for everyone to get them engaged and to get them to be motivated to contribute. That's great, thank you. Uh, any questions for me? in this uh in this conversation yes i have a question for you go ahead um, i would like to ask you to kindly share with us what what did you learn or after hearing our stories the youth stories that have been shared well um I guess I had a few thoughts coming into the conversation because uh, I, in reading about what you all have been up to, um, I one of, and then I'll I'll share what I've heard from you today. Um, one of my favorite um, sort of slogans in my mind that I have as I try to make change comes from a a book I read probably twelve years ago now, and the book is called Switch. And it's about trying to make change when change is hard. And one of the ideas that they have in the book switch is to shrink the change. That if you set out, for example, if Esabia had set out to end COVID, right, that, that, that is too big a goal. We, we would all uh, wish to be able to, to address that. Or um, Chama, if you had wanted to, to just, um, I don't know, you know, fix democracy in Tunisia, that's, that's too big a goal. You know, each of us can set our sights almost too high. And, and that means that the gap between what we achieve and what we set out to achieve, that gap can, can be demoralizing and it, and it can keep people on the sidelines also because they, they see that it's kind of not realistic. And so, so one thing that I'm really struck by, by all, all of you is the way you've, you found there's a there are big challenges out there, but you found a way to to skinny down the the change you seek into you know uh, objectives that are stretch objectives. They really would I mean very very hard right to achieve what you're setting out to achieve. So it's not it's not like so easy as to not be worthwhile. It would really it really requires you know mobilization and resilience and all of that. But at the same time. It is conceivable that if you do the following things that you can make some, some impact on this objective that you have set. So I think I was very struck in reading about you beforehand. Then in listening to you, I think, especially in talking about your use of storytelling, I'm struck that there are two kinds of storytelling that you're bringing to bear. 
uh, well, more, more than two, I'm sure, but two that stand out today. One is, you know, what is the story of, of, of change that you seek? So how do you make vivid to your, um, you know, people in your community, the thing that you are seeking to change, right? So, so how do you make that accessible? Do you use a cartoon? Do you use, uh, as, as Sabita said, uh, a poster? Or do you use, a, you know, a social media campaign or something on Instagram? Or th there, there's that objective you have about the, the change you seek in your community. But listening to Chima just now, I am struck by the, the other kind of story that we all need to tell, which is the story about the impact that we have made, even if it's very, very small, because I, I think the way I would put it is hope is fuel. And what a lot of people who are on the sidelines lack is you know, fundamentally a belief that they can make even small change. They just think, ah, oh, you know, I got to put all that effort in, go out and about, I risk myself, I make myself vulnerable because I try to do something that's hard and it'll never work. You know, it didn't work for our parents, our grandparents, they've been trying to build democracy. You know, they've been trying to protect the environment. They've been combating gender-based violence, you know, and look, look at all the problems that still persist. And so in one storytelling, what I'm hearing from you is that it's also just really important to tell a story to kind of hold a mirror up to your own effort to, to generate that hope that it can work to get involved, you know, that you're better off in the game as hard as it is and as time consuming as it is and as disappointing as it can be, you're better off in the game than on the sidelines. And so, so that's sometimes doesn't come naturally because none of us, you know, we're interested in fixing the world, not in focusing on ourselves. But I think that being able to, to tell that story of impact is the way that we pull more people you know, into, into the effort. And so it's really inspiring to, to hear the different ways you all have done so in such, on such different issues and in such different settings. Um, so uh, anyway, I, th I thank you for this inspiration. It's, in, it's going to inform what we do here at USAID and how we try to, to support young people and in closing, again, let me thank you for inspiring anybody who's watching this today and inspiring, I'm sure your, your neighbors and your classmates where you are. Um, and above all, I wish you happy International Youth Day today, a special celebration and congratulations. Uh, again, you, uh, you really should feel very proud uh, at, at standing out Young people today are doing such incredible work that to win this competition and to be chosen, uh, you know, you all uh, are doing something very special. So congratulations on that. Thank you and good luck. Uh, so I would like to thank you so much uh, for, for having me and nice to meet you all. Uh, Tremon Sonor, uh, Administrator uh, Power, uh, to be meet with you. And happy International Youth Day, also happy Indigenous Day. Uh, I'm wearing traditional Indilio outfit uh, right now to honoring the Indigenous Day as a youth. Thank you. So for me, I'll say thank you so much. I'm so grateful. And I, uh, I want just to share the fact that, yeah, it's possible. Hope is uh, tangible if we all decide to work on it. I think that's a, that's a message I'm going to take back with me that hope is possible, regardless of how the reality just want to push me in the dilemma that nothing is going to happen. I'm going to stick on that the hope is possible and then I can do small steps every day to really make sure that I can achieve it. Thank you for bringing that up. And thank, thank you for inviting me. I really want to say thank you so much for everyone. It was really amazing to have this conversation with you all. And um, if like, I want to leave this conversation with just one thing, which is for whoever is going to watch this conversation or this recording, I want them all to remember that even if it seems so hard and so unachievable and so infeasible, just like breaking down whatever seems like that and working towards it with a lot of perseverance, enthusiasm, and let's say passion and drive, and having clear vision of the change that anyone wants to um, to have in this world would 
be so simple if we believe that impossible is not and then you can add in whatever word sentence or location or anything that you want to add just like bear that in mind and everything is feasible because like impossible is just like it's a, a word that we can play with with in different ways and that in itself creates or reignites the hope that we have in order to achieve the change that we want to see in this world for the future generations. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Good luck out there. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you all so much for this enlightening conversation. I think we can all agree that the impact these young people have made up until now is remarkable. I cannot wait to see what comes next from them. Now we will be moving into our breakout rooms where the rest of our contest winners will be joining us. Here's where you get to shine. We'll answer your questions from the beginning of the event. And we hope that you have plenty more because our young storytellers are eager to share their insights.